Alright everybody, have I been fishing this summer so far? Yeah, I have. Have I done pretty good so far this year? Well, I think so. Look at that. Oh, it's eating good. Hey there, everybody. Jig and Jerry here. Well, as you can see, I'm off today. I'm not out at the pier. I'm not out at the beach. I'm not beach fishing. I'm not river fishing. I'm not sneak pond fishing. And, uh, just hanging out, cooling out in my little wonderland here. Anyway, I'm going to try to do an episode here, helping you out uh, with a how-to. Uh, I did an FAQ video, which some of you might have seen, some of you may have not seen, but it just covers the basics of what you would need uh, to pier fish, uh, basically at the Mount Pleasant Pier or any inshore pier. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to elaborate on that and I'm going to actually try to show you how to set up by hand your own Carolina rigs, what type of hooks to use, what type of tools I recommend you have with you when you're out fishing. And uh, for those of you who want to try some jigging, throw in some artificials, I'm going to show you uh, my recommended lines that I use and how to set up uh, going from a braid to a fluorocarbon using a uni uni knot, very simple. Uh, how to set up little clips where quick releases where you can, uh, instead of retying, retying, using up that fluorocarbon, things like that. Um, a lot of people are wondering and they want to know what type of baits to use and everything and how to hook them. We'll try to cover that as well. So let's get started. All right, everybody. Some of the first things I recommend here is to have at least keep with you in your tackle box certain items here uh, bag whatever you need when you're out fishing a little multi screwdriver uh, is great to have these screwdrivers have little Phillips and a little flat head on it it helps you maintain your fishing reel and other equipment while you're out on the spot screws come loose stuff like that a little small adjustable wrench you know a lot of those necks on top of your reels that that little nut at the top will start to loosen underneath the spool. This will help you tighten it back up and get your reel back in shape. And of course, if it starts to stiffen on you out there and fail, keep some grease with you, okay? Grease is preferred definitely over uh, a lot of liquid oils. They pour all over, get all over the handles, everything. Keep some grease with you. Recommend it. And of course, glue, super glue, some type of quick adhesive glue. It's great. A tip starts coming loose on your rod or a tip breaks, you can use uh, little tool like this, a little small screwdriver in there, clean it out and glue it back on and be back in business. A little ceramic uh, insert starts to come loose, one drop of this can get you through the day. So I recommend that. Now as far as rigging and everything, I'll tell you, clippers, a must have. Fantastic. I'll tell you, they get things done quickly, snip your line, uh, snip through blade, uh, braid, um, it really helps when you have a pre-tied, something that was tied before, you can cut it right off of your jigs or your hooks and be in business. This comes in great. This right here, this little hook, these utility hooks, utility tools like this are fantastic. They're great for when you have jig heads and stuff that are painted all the way through and you can't get your line through them. It pops right in there, as you can see, cleans it out quickly and uh, also helps in removing hooks. You can actually hook another hook inside something's mouth with this and pull it right out. That helps tremendously. Now, these little hemostats here, fantastic. They are my best friend. They help me with my knots. They help me remove uh, my hooks out of very small fish's mouths. And um, they just come in handy for all kinds of things. I'll tell you, 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 you feel lost without them. And then I keep a long pair, and I recommend these with the built-in scissors on them. 
Uh, these are great, especially for stingrays and a lot of fish with a very deep mouth. You have to get way in there. Or if you cannot remove the hook freely out of a, uh, an important game fish, okay, red drum, stuff like that, that hook's in there too far. You don't want to kill that fish. You don't want to hurt that fish. You can cut right at your hook in that fish's mouth and release that fish safely. They come in handy for that, okay? All right, let's get started on some other rigs here. All right, now hooks I recommend. Uh, I just have an assortment of hooks here. Uh, circle hooks and mosquito or considered octopus hooks are my main hooks that I use out here personally. You can use what you like, this is what I recommend. Different size, uh, a three aught and um, two aught circle hooks like this here, as you can see, are fantastic for red drum, uh, big flounder, uh, mostly red drum in my, in my uh, game here, and uh, different other style circle hooks. This is almost like a snell circle hook, and I use this for flounder mostly, uh, using live mullet uh, right through the nose, which is fantastic. Uh, cut pinfish, a one-aught circle hook is fantastic for cut pinfish. As you can see that right there. Uh, you can use, there's different brands. Figure out the brand you like. Um, these are by owner here, so I really, really enjoy these. This is a, that's like a mosquito hook, what they consider an octopus hook. I've shown this before. This right here is a one-aught, and I use this for mud minnows and uh, sheephead and red drum, uh, fishing for the red drum. Uh, using crabs. Uh, my favorite is a number four, which is small, like this right here. And that's a fantastic hook to use. These are called SSWs. Um, they're very, very strong, very thick, stout hook, so they don't bend out. All right, let's get to some weights. All right. I mostly use Carolina rigs, different lengths, different sizes. So I like to keep a main assortment of egg weights with me. And egg weights are exactly what they are. They look just like an egg, except for they have a hole through the center that you slide your line through. And I'll show you how to rig them up here in a few minutes. But the assortment I like to keep is this four selection here. And it starts with a two ounce, an ounce and a half, a one ounce, and a half ounce. When I'm being tricky and I'm playing light, it doesn't have to do with the size of the bait, it has to do with how sensitive I'm fishing. If I'm using a lot of light finesse and I'm just balancing stuff in the current, I go light. I usually don't go over, personally I've said this before, I usually don't go over an ounce and a half. But sometimes, some of the areas I'm fishing, um, require up to a two, at least a two ounce. The water's heavier, it's uh, fast. And you can use a real heavy uh, three ounce if you want to, or even a four ounce, but it's gonna be like you're holding an anchor out there, and most of the time, unless it's a mambo, something big grabbing it and doesn't care about a four ounce big weight hanging on there, you, you never feel the fish. That's more of a sight thing and going for a run and a big piece of fish, trying to hold it down, but uh, a lot of people use a a three ounce or a four ounce for sheep head, uh, a little fiddle crab on it, uh, stationary rods anchored off the side, straight lining down, trying to hold it stationary. Uh, it has worked for them. Personally, I don't prefer that. I go with the lighter stuff. But those are the weights I recommend that uh, you keep on board. And make sure you have enough of them. Uh, don't just get one or two. Make sure you got at least four or five of each because you will be losing them. I guarantee you there's a lot of structure out there in a lot of places. So, now let's go to making a Carolina rig. How's that, guys? All right, let's make you all a Carolina rig. This one time here, one size, one size fits all because once you learn how to do this, you can make whatever desired length 
of Carolina rig you want in structure. You can use a bigger weight, a uh, heavier fluorocarbon uh, lead line, or a heavier fight line that comes from your fishing rod. In this case here, to show you this, I'm going to use line right off of a spool. Just pretend this is coming from your fishing rod. I'm going to take this ounce and a half weight. You're going to take it and you're going to slide that right through your egg weight. Just like that. You're going to pull it through, then you're going to set your egg weight down and your line down. Now, you're going to cut a desired length. I prefer fluorocarbon. There are people out there that do use monofilament tippet lines, but, uh, or leader line, and the fluorocarbon is more abrasive resistant. And when it's more abrasive resistant, it's going to hold up to their sharp little teeth better. And actually, uh, you have a better chance of landing the fish without him chewing through that line. Now, I'm going to take this. You're going to need a little swivel, just like that. Uh, different sizes. Use what's comfortable for you. I use a, and weight rated, just remember weight rated. I keep a little tray like this with all my assorted swivels and hooks and everything to make it easy. I pop it open and I grab what I like right on the spot. I don't have to go searching and pulling a bunch of things apart. Anyway, you're going to start, okay, and I'm going to show you, I'm not going to get into a bunch of names of knots and everything like that. I'm going to show you a quick and simple one. You're going to take your cut desired length. I usually do two foot. The reason why is when you get done tying your leader line like this, you're gonna, it's going to be about 18 inches up from two foot by the time you tie your knots and use the extra line on there. Fold it, okay, in half and make a loop. This is called a polymer knot, all right? You're going to take it and you're going to put it through one eyelet on your swivel, come around, and you're just going to do a half hitch like you're tying your shoe and then pull it, okay? It's gonna create a loop. See that loop? You're gonna take your swivel and you're gonna put it through that little loop. Pull the loop up over the top and then just pull your line. And there it is. And then I grab the little tail line and pull that tight. It creates a nice, strong knot, okay? Then I take my beloved clippers here and I clip off my excess, leaving me a nice knot. Now, you're going to take that end of your fishing line that's going through that egg sinker, okay? And you're going to do the same knot. Again, fold your line in half, make that loop. Push that loop through the other eyelet of your swivel, okay? Mm, that was wrestling me there. There you go. You're going to come around and you're going to do your half hitch. Pull it taut, take that loop and take the and push your swivel back through with your leader line. Pull your leader line through. That's gonna loop up over the top, pull it taut. There you go. Now, there's your fight line, there's your leader line, and here's your egg weight coming from your rod. There you go. There's that part, okay? When that sits on the bottom and the fish pulls, that weight stays in place and that line slides through. There you go. Now, the last bit is tying your fluorocarbon to your desired hook. In this case, let's go with a one, a one size one, not one aught. I'm sorry. This is a size one, okay, SSW hook, which is like a mosquito or an octopus. Now, what I do with this, you're going to like this. I'm not going to go telling you the name. I'm just going to show you because it's all in what you see is what you get. Let's not worry about names here. Take this line and put it through. Always have your tip of your hook facing up. Put it straight down through the eyelet. Pull it to you. Pinch your fingers just over both. Grab the end of your line and come back over up. When you do, you're gonna hold them both together. It's gonna create this loop, okay? You're gonna take that little end line and you are going to wrap from the top down. Five wraps, one, and start wrapping down. Two, oop, it's a wrestling man. There it is, two, three, four, five. Then after you're holding it pinched in your fingers, that's where I take these, I love it. I grab this little end, 
there's a little loop back behind the tip of your fingers here. I put it through it. Hold, grab the other end and hold it taut. Just let them hang. Just like that. Now watch, that's creating the tension. Then just pull your line from your hook. Watch that. Now wrap up. Oh, look at that. That is sweet. It will go nowhere. Unclip from that using its own weight. Take your beloved clippers, desired little tail length. Look at that. Store bought. Okay? Store bought. Now, there is your Carolina rig. Your desired hook, your line, your swivel, and then, of course, your egg weight. And there you go. You will be putting your bait. Now this is great for big fiddler crabs. This is great for uh, live mullet mud minnows right through the lips. Um, this is great for small cut bait and shrimp. Uh, catch all kinds of things, okay? But you can use this rig for all types of fishing and all different types of hooks. Just remember that that's the most important rig that you will have. The fish will never ever see this line. They will pick this up, walk around with it, swallow it, and you got them. Success will be great. It does help. Anyway, let's get to some other things. All right, let's move these. Get this ready. Jigging. Jigging artificials consist of uh, jigs like this. This is a squiggle tail, okay? Here's your jig heads. They have them in all different sizes, okay? You take them like this. You put them in the jig, the grub. You pull it up, pop out the back. Make sure you get your length right and push it down into the body, okay? You toss these, you cast these out with just a nothing but a clear lead and you do different techniques in the water with them, okay? You drop them into the water, let them fall, and then pop them up, twitch them. Uh, just a, a constant certain depth, let them fall one depth and reel at one pace and the tail wiggles. Uh, I call that lazy man fishing, but there's a lot of people that do it and they have great success. Anyway, um, just reeling these in. There are different types. As you can see here, this is a paddle tail, okay? This is a Texas roach by Saltwater Assassin. And again, there's the jig head in the jig with a black head to match the black body. And you have different styles, different brands. One of my uh, buddy's favorites is the Root Beer and Chartreuse uh, Grub by DOA. And they, it is a high quality grub, works fantastic. It's tail pattern on this, holds a great flutter in the water. Um, he uses this in a casting technique of just reeling. He whips it in there, drops it in a few selected feet, and then just reels a nice steady pace. That is his favorite technique, works for him great. That is his favorite. Now, what I'm gonna show you for these, and that one technique, um, is so I'm gonna show you how to tie your jigging rod and what type of rod you need to jig these things, including setting up for imitation shrimp. This shrimp here is a Billy Bay. This is a Billy Bay artificial shrimp. It's fantastic, it's stationary. You can't change the rigging on this shrimp, okay? This weight is built in, it's got a very heavy duty hook. It's foil embedded and flaked. Comes in different colors, different patterns, okay? You have DOA, DOA shrimp. This is a silver flake DOA. It's got a green tint to it because it sat with something else and it like colors. But uh, they have a silver hook that's removable and a weight that's removable. Sometimes you can actually change the sizes. I actually changed these out and I changed the hooks out to a different style hook, different brand. And uh, I'll get into those type of techniques later of how to change up your rigs, including even making these weedless. Not today. But anyway, let's show you how to set up for these. Okay. Now, a rod. You want a rod with a nice reel, maybe like a, uh, this is a 2500, okay? This is a Symmetry, Shimano, FJ, very popular, very good. This is a Calico Jack, it's very stiff. It's an IM7, fast action, um, 
It is great because it goes all the way up to fight 17 pound test. I have 20 pound braid on here, okay? I prefer Power Pro. Power Pro works the best for me, but there are other lines people prefer out there, so just use the one you prefer. The reason I use a braid in jigging is because a braid has no stretch. It is very sensitive, the hook set is immediate, and you can feel every bump on a fast action rod. Now, how to tie this up. You're going to take your line here, okay? The end. Let's move it over because the wind's coming up on me. Sounds like a thunderstorm in the background, so I better hurry up, huh? You're gonna take this line and like the Carolina rig, I'm gonna cut off about two feet of 20 pound test fluorocarbon, okay? Remember, this is salt water. The reason you want a little tougher fluorocarbon is because of structure, cover, teeth. That's why you can uh, have a competition with yourself and use the lightest stuff you want, but a lot of times uh, it makes it rough to land some trophies. But anyway, now we're gonna do a uni to uni knot. Now in this uni to uni knot, you're going to take both your lines and you're gonna put them together. And then you're going to bring this line over in a loop. I'm going to have to continue this in another spot because the weather's getting ridiculous and it's blowing my line everywhere and I can't show you. So let's move indoors and I'll show you this a little close up. All right. Well, all right, everybody. Unfortunately, this episode's taking a little long, so I have to continue with a part two. So please feel free to watch part two and I will continue showing you how to rig up for jigging and of course how to hook your live baits and artificial baits and so on. Alright, hang in there.